Hello everyone, it's New York Railfan202 here, and today we will be making the second remade episode of Engines of Metro North. This time we will be discussing the Bud M1 and M3 railcars as they are extremely similar and have extremely intertwined histories. Now, let's get started. The story of the Bud M1 and M3 starts off with the bankrupt New York Central and Pennsylvania railroads, which were lacking the funds to make the necessary upgrades to its commuter services. The New York Central was responsible for the commuter operations for what would become Metro North, with the Pennsylvania Railroad being responsible for the Long Island Railroad. On both railroads, everything from rolling stock to stations was in need of an upgrade, but the funds simply did not exist on either railroad as passenger service was dying. In the 1970s, both railroads were still using cars built from 1908 to 1938, which were heavy, dirty, and definitely in need of an upgrade. Even with the new order of cars in the 1960s, the lack of maintenance on those cars in the following years meant that most of them needed to be replaced, especially on the Long Island Railroad. Around this time, the state government organized the Metropolitan Commuter Authority to control commuter operations in New York State. The agency actually ended up purchasing the Long Island Railroad outright from the Pennsylvania Railroad, as the railroad was at risk of disappearing altogether. The agency also began subsidizing the New York Central's commuter service out of Grand Central as well. Finally, the funding existed to maintain and purchase new cars for both railroads. These cars were to be way ahead of their time and designed to draw commuters back to the rails. This new design was introduced by Bud, who had been a pioneer of rail car comfort with their sleek and modern Metroliner EMU. These new EMUs would be called Metropolitans as they were built exclusively for the Metropolitan Commuter Authority. These cars would be air-conditioned and only accommodate high-level platforms. The non-openable windows and high-level design gave the Metropolitan a unique design never seen before, and the stainless steel rounded sides gave it a modern look. These new cars would feature General Electric technology for their electronics, but unlike the Bud Metroliner, these cars were reliable. Each car would be permanently connected to another with one end of each car in the set featuring a driving cab, and one car in each set featuring a restroom. The cars were each equipped with four 148 horsepower General Electric 1255A2 traction motors for a total of 592 horsepower per car. The high power gave the Metropolitans a much quicker acceleration than the cars they replaced. The cars rode on Bud Pioneer trucks and featured double leaf doors. The cars had a top speed of 100 miles per hour, however they were only operated at 80 miles per hour in service. The Long Island Railroad cars also featured automatic train control, but this was never implemented. The cars were so powerful that the Long Island Railroad's third rail system could not handle them, and the system was therefore upgraded from 650 volts to 750 volts to support them. The first cars entered service in 1968 on the Long Island Railroad. The first cars entered service in 1968 on the Long Island Railroad, with the last of the Long Island Railroad cars coming in 1970. The first Metro North car came in 1971 and the last in 1973. All cars were built at Bud's Red Line plant in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Long Island Railroad purchased 620 cars and replaced every other electric multiple unit in the railroad's fleet. The New York Central commuter routes received 174 cars and replaced all other multiple units except for the 4600 and 4700 series ACMUs. The cars did exactly as they were supposed to, and ridership started to increase again. This increase was so great that the Long Island Railroad placed an order for an additional 150 cars in 1973, bringing the total to 770. While the order was being completed, the New York Central Railroad merged with the Pennsylvania Railroad and later the New Haven Railroad to form Penn Central but the service continued to be subsidized by the Metropolitan Commuter Authority. The cars used on the Long Island Railroad would be designated as M1s as they were the first in the series of Metropolitan EMUs. The Metro North cars would be designated as M1As as they were the alternate specification to the M1, featuring a different third rail shoe from Metro North's unique third rail. Other than the difference in third rail shoes, the cars were identical, but the Long Island Railroad had many more failures than Metro North. During the warranty period, the Long Island Railroad was having to replace four traction motors per week, while Penn Central replaced two motors during the entire period. The disparities in maintenance and operating conditions on both railroads were obvious, but General Electric technicians were able to find a fix for the cars and make them more reliable on the Long Island Railroad. 
In 1976, the bankrupt Penn Central was limping along, but the federal government recognized the importance of railroads in the northeastern United States and merged Penn Central and other railroads to form the government railroad Conrail. Conrail also inherited the Penn Central commuter routes and began operating them, but the state subsidy still remained. Even with government funds, Conrail was still struggling along and the federal government wanted states to directly take over commuter operations, so the newly formed Metropolitan Transportation Authority created Metro North to take over Conrail's commuter routes out of Grand Central Terminal. With both Metro North and the Long Island Railroad under state ownership, the state invested money in both railroads, which was spent on maintenance and service expansions. Many lines had needed electrification for decades, but never received it due to lack of funds, and they finally did. Both railroads now needed more cars to operate these newly electrified lines and account for service increases. Bud presented a revised version of the M1, the Bud M3. The M3 would be similar to the M1, just with more modern technology. It therefore had more powerful General Electric 1261 160 horsepower traction motors for a total of 640 horsepower per car. The Long Island Railroad ordered 174 M3s built from 1984 to 1986. Metro North also placed an order for 142 M3As, which were built from 1984 to 1985. This would be one of the last orders that Bud would produce, as just a year after the order was completed, the company filed for bankruptcy. With more power, the M3s had faster acceleration than the M1s. Nevertheless, Long Island Railroad decided to mix train sets with M1s and M3s, whereas Metro North did not. On both railroads throughout the 1980s, the M1s were rebuilt with more modern interiors to match the M3s. Those cars carried on in service, providing railroads with reliable service. But being built in the 1960s, by the 2000s, the M1s were just under 40 years old, and it was their time to go. Both railroads replaced their M1s with Bombardier M7s, with the Long Island Railroad retiring them in 2007 and Metro North retiring them in 2009. Before they were scrapped, the Railroad Museum of Long Island hosted a farewell to the M1 excursion on the Long Island Railroad on December the 4th, 2006. All Metro North M1s were scrapped, however one pair of Long Island Railroad M1s have been preserved. Pair 9547 at the Railroad Museum of Long Island, with other cars serving as rail adhesion cars on the railroad. With the arrival of the M7s, Metro North decided to rebuild the interiors of their M3s to better match the interiors of the M7s. The Long Island Railroad opted not to rebuild them, and therefore they retained their original interior colors. That brings us right up to date with the M7s and M3s in service. However, the M3s days may not be numbered. While the M9s have entered service on the Long Island Railroad to replace them, delays in their construction have changed the railroad's plans. The Long Island Railroad now plans to rebuild some of their M3s and keep them until at least 2024. Metro North plans to keep their M3s up to date and plans to keep them until 2026. With the coronavirus pandemic, all of this is subject to change especially with the MTA's budget issues. While the M1s were eventually retired, they provided 40 years of service on both railroads and introduced features that are now seen as standard across the industry. These cars turned a ridership decline into an increase, and the Bud M3 is likely to serve for another decade. And that is all about the Bud M1 and M3 EMU. I hope you enjoyed this remade episode of Engine of Metro North. And if you like it, like it. And if you didn't, then dislike it. That's fine too. And if you loved it, please subscribe. And be sure to leave a comment for anything else. And I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye.